Let's now talk about continuous integration. We've already spoken about defects at its effects and how it affects the software reliability that we want to achieve. The good news is simple testing can prevent most critical of failures that includes the bugs, outages, software defects, etc. In fact, it's been proven and analyzed and you should definitely go and look at this particular white paper which talks about how a simple testing can achieve higher reliability by reducing like most of the defects. Now, testing helps us by providing that essential feedback on the quality of our code and helps us improve that. Just like how the modern mobile phone cameras have improved our photography. You go to Instagram today and you see, oh wow, everybody is a photographer now. And that's possible because we get this in instant feedback unlike the film or roll cameras that we used to, you know, use earlier where we would have to wait for weeks to get the feedback on the photograph that we have taken today. Now with the mobile cameras, you, you, can, you can take the photographs as many as uh, you want, get the instant feedback, re delete the ones which you don't like and take another one, you know, if you want to improve on something. And that's how you iteratively and continuously improve your photography. And that's what we want to do with our software delivery. Now the next questions are, how do we test the code to get that feedback? What all do we test and when is the good time to run these tests? So how, what and when? Let's start by answering in the reverse order, beginning with when do we run the tests? And that brings us to the concept of integration. Since most of our workflows today involve collaborative work, and that's how we set up the development workflows, whether it's a trunk based development or some iteration of that, you know, it is imperative to make sure we run the tests whenever we integrate to that main line of our code, right? And this is an example of an integration. Here we have uh, some branches forked out from that main line, which is in red, uh, the blue and the pink are the branches forked out and you run the local branches, do some testing on it, and then you integrate it to the main line. Main line is the, you know, the common branch that every team in our organization typically would use. And that's how we typically set up the workflow. So we work in teams, but share the same code base. And then everyone, every team checks out the code from that common repository, that's our main line of code, and maintain the master branch or similar to that. Now each team creates their own respective branches, works in that branch and then integrate to the main line often to support agile practices. So the answer to the when, when do we run tests is in the integration. So whenever the code integrates, run the tests. That should answer it. Next question is what all do we test? That's important as well. We must test or write some unit tests to, you know, run or to test the block of code that we keep on writing, right? So we write the unit test for each unit of our code rather. And that becomes an important part of our feedback process. The sequence should be then, whenever we integrate, let's go ahead and run unit tests. Now, apart from running tests, we also need to ensure that the build, generally the compilation process, should not break either, especially in the master branch. So we would also have to ensure that we include that in our sequence to test that the compilation also works. That's a build phase. We've just added the build phase to our pipeline now or the sequence of tests that we want to run whenever we integrate. We could keep on adding multiple different types of tests, including let's say integration tests because unit tests are run with some mock services and mock e mock calls, mock events and so on. If you want to test your code against the real services, real backends, you would typically write some integration tests, which are then run typically from the main line or the master branch or the trunk. We could also include some interesting analysis tool like uh, static code analysis tools such as Sonacube, 
which would scan our code automatically and tell us whether there are any vulnerabilities, bugs, any malpractices and anything that we could improve upon. And that is all automatic. That's just an interesting thing to have in our pipeline as well. So our sequence now becomes in addition to build and unit test, we may want to run static checkers, that is static code analysis, integration tests, and we can keep on adding multiple different types of tests to ensure the reliability of our code and increase the confidence when we deploy it in production. Because if we test our code against a realistic load, that would, you know, uh, tell us whether our uh, any is there any bug that would you know blow out of proportion in production and so on compliance becomes another in important part of the pipeline for many of the organizations so compliance test can also be codified and can be automatically run so you can run acceptance test load test compliance test and you can keep on adding the kind of test that you would want to you know uh, create so your comp as much of your test should be automated and should be run as part of that automated pipeline right so this is what we learned so we want to run all these tests and as part of the agile practices when do we run it is whenever we integrate we integrate often so we would have to run these tests continuously and that's the process we would call as continuous integration quite obvious isn't it so continuous integration if you want to define it this is how i would do that is a process of ensuring that every change that gets integrated to the main line of your repository goes through enough checks that you're confident about its reliability when you decide to deploy it. Now we answered the when part and the what part. We also learned about the definition of continuous integration. Let's just go ahead and talk about how to achieve it though. And that part is quite simple because we have a bunch of tools which could help us create a sequence of checks that are then automatically triggered based on certain external event. And that has been inspired by the assembly line that Ford set up in 1915, which was then perfected over decades by Toyota production system. And this is how our software pipeline could look like. This is just a sample of it. So what are the desired features of a continuous integration tool? First of all, it should have the ability to create jobs by integrating with various tools. Then it should be able to connect them to create a pipeline. The pipeline should not only be run automatically, but it also have some triggers built in so that it runs in an automated way based on certain external events. And this is what brings us to the tools that you could possibly use, starting with Jenkins, Go, Bamboo, all of these are self-hosted continuous integration platform, which you can set up in your data center and work with those. You also have some hosted platforms, web hosted platforms such as Travis CI and Circle CI, which are quite interesting as well. The de facto standard in the world of continuous integration though, remains Jenkins. So in this video, we just learned about what is continuous integration and when to run it, what all to test and how to do so.